actually brought my own water. I apologize to you all for my voice. I was in China over the last 24 hours, and I just want to say to Madam President, I promise I will not use up my eight minutes in time. I want to deliver the first Liz Truss honorary lecture, so I will be very quick with you all. I stood here 36 years ago last week, and my parents sat right where the two of you are right now, and they're not here anymore. And I remember how excited I was that they came here to listen to me. And I had to read every single word because I was so afraid, which is why I stand here now without any notes and just speak from my heart and to acknowledge that after the debate was done, my parents were so proud that my mother went up to the opposition and said, you were brilliant, and you are brilliant. This is the best debating society on the face of the globe. You are the most talented students that I've ever taught, and someone in this room will be prime minister someday, which is why this vote matters so much. Boris Johnson sat in the chair that you're sitting in right now, and by the way, I did the polling for him in his election for union president. So please accept my apology. <laughs> what I have never acknowledged until this point right now, and I do so in front of members of Congress, was that on that survey, to hide the fact that it was for Boris Johnson, it was a poll about Oxford's sexual behavior. How appropriate that was, as we later discovered. The new definition of chaos, Boris Johnson, 10 Downing Street on Father's Day. Okay, one bad one. Look, we've had our issues. We're not perfect, and we've made mistakes. And clearly, you could be critical of the two most recent presidents. I know I have. Donald Trump is not anyone's imagination, anyone's belief as a, as a diplomat. On the very last presidential, official presidential event, December 23rd, 2020, at the White House Christmas party, I finally had the guts to go up and ask him, what does the J and Donald J. Trump stand for? You know what he told me? Genius. <laughs> but make no mistake, Joe Biden is no walk in the park either. The guy is so old, it takes him an hour and a half to watch 60 Minutes. I'm told that the original Gladstone to Israeli debate, Biden was there, so. No, sir. <laughs> and I can still remember Nick Robinson from the BBC offering points of information and having him utterly destroy me. So I will accept no points tonight, <laughs> but I will say to you that whatever you would have said is brighter than what I would say right now. Here's the issue. When the U.S. doesn't act, when we don't intervene, the world looks at us and says, why not? We did nothing to help the people of Rwanda during their genocide. They cried. They begged the U.N. They looked to Europe. They looked to anyone to step in and stop the slaughter. And we did nothing and a million people died. The fact is, we, our interventions have not always been successful. You've made that point so effectively. But if we stay out, if we had not engaged 80 years ago, where would the world be today? If we were not where we are today, what do you think Iran would have done to the rest of the Middle East? What do you think China would do to Asia, what do you think Russia would do to Europe? You're correct. I give you credit. These interventions haven't always worked. 
But if we stay silent and we accept that, then the consequences will be much worse than what we have achieved up to this point. You're correct, sir. There is no communist, global communist domination anymore. And you all are correct that we beat fascism. And there will be uprisings and there will be challenges throughout the next 10, 20, 50 years that you all don't even anticipate now. But just as the world needed the UK 100 years ago, the world needs the US now. I'd like to propose one point as an alternative to the dangers of intervention. And I'm so glad that we have members of Congress from both political parties here. And that's polarization. If we lose the ability to talk to each other, then we cannot resolve our differences. If societies like this don't exist, or worse yet, they do exist, but we are so polarized that we can't talk to each other, the consequences of that are actually more severe. The greatest thing about this debate is the fact that the Democratic leader of the Intelligence Committee and the former Republican Speaker of the House are on the same side at the same time. And that is a success that I've been waiting to see in the United States of America. And so I ask you to show respect for those that we may disagree with, but thank God we have the ability to disagree, and to acknowledge that if the U.S. is not there, the damage to the world would be even greater. And in the end, join us for a drink at the bar, because I know Oxford students drink a lot. I certainly did when I was here. And drink. <laughs> drink to freedom. Drink to, by the way, drink got a huge round of applause. <laughs> freedom got two people over here. Drink to peace. Drink to prosperity drink to protection, and toast America and Great Britain, because there's so much more that unites us than divides us, and drink to the future of a happy, successful, hopeful, optimistic population with America in it. Thank you all very much. <laughs>